So probably the most unique feature about CNC4 from a multiplayer standpoint is our domination mode. So the way domination mode works is you have five uh, goal nodes, uh, which we call our Tiberium control hubs, spread around the map. And the objective is to capture those nodes and hold on to them uh, for as long as possible to accumulate points uh, so that your team can win. So there's a variety of ways to win, but it's not just killing the other guy, it's objective based. Though you can kill the other guy, it will help you win. And the bigger the thing you kill, the more points you get. Along the same lines, getting rid of base building means that you want the player to be able to do something across the map and really be able to project power in different areas and take control of it with units or resources or what have you. It's more about working as a team, working with uh, you know two, three, four other teammates to really spread out, capture those nodes, use the class system to actually hold those nodes and then branch out. So you play as a group as opposed to just being five guys on the same side all trying to kill the other person. It, 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 we try and encourage team play. What this results in is a case where team play is much more important than it was in previous games. Although in previous games you could quickly run in and decimate somebody's base, in this particular case, if you're not constantly aware of the battlefield, where your forces are and where the battle lines are drawn, you're not going to be able to hold control of those Tiberium control networks and not going to be able to win. We've lost node one. One of the things that we really wanted to focus on in Command & Conquer 4 early on in the development process was the fluidity of class changing and really your ability to strongly impact the game in a very different way by playing each individual class. Being able to respawn really changes up how you play multiplayer because you're no longer damned by the choices you made at the beginning of the game. It allows you to take more risks. You're able to maybe try out a strategy from the get-go, say you choose a, you know, the support class, and you go and try a strategy, and maybe it doesn't work out. You get ambushed, you lose your crawler. Um, instead of having to you know, admit defeat, we have the respawn system, so that allows you to change up your strategy, work with your teammates to find out what the team needs at that point in time, and then come back and try and you know, get revenge on that guy who killed you. That's exactly what Command & Conquer 4 is all about. Getting into the action as soon as possible, not having a whole lot of wait time in between, and being able to make those split-second decisions that turn the tide of battle completely in the other direction. While CNC 4 was designed around team play, it is actually an extremely fun 1v1 game. So hardcore 1v1 players, they can play 1v1, but we really want to draw them into the team play experience. We went to the point of having some of the world's best 1v1 players, guys who crush me without even loading the game, come in and play CNC4 and give us their feedback. One of the most surprising pieces of feedback we got was that they enjoyed 3v3, 4v4, and 5v5 a lot. But really, when it gets down to it, what makes Command & Conquer 4 the most fun in terms of team play, and what's really going to appeal to these high-end players, is how the different classes mesh with each other. When you are in coordination with another player on your team, and you have a team leader, and you're all on vent, and you're yelling at each other to go to a particular area, or support another area, or throw up defenses, or throw up a tunnel, things get really fast, really hectic, and a whole lot of fun. Just like in multiplayer, it's going to be very important to coordinate with your teammate in co-op to have the most optimal single player experience. Yeah, you could both build tanks, but ultimately when something flies into your radar, you're not going to be able to shoot back at it. It's the best idea to have one player as one class and another player as another complementary class. Where, you know, the class that you're playing, the class that your teammate's playing, the communication, all of that is still there. And so there we've actually designed our objectives, so it's more about how you go about completing the objective. Usually if you're in a defend mission, you can have one player play as defense and another player go as offense and keep the objectives around the map, while one player really creates a home base, creates a large number of defensive structures, and plays the base building game, which is still a lot of fun in these single player missions where you can really hole up in an area and defending against a large number of AI forces. We don't want it to be, this is the offense class objective. It's more about, this is the objective. As the offense class, you could take this route, but if you were playing as a fence and your friend is defense, this is a good way to do it. Overall, we're really looking forward to people jumping online and trying out Command & Conquer 4. We've tried a large number of different methodologies to allow players to jump in, get the action they want out of a Command & Conquer game, but at the same time, be playing in a very social atmosphere with their friends and allow them to focus on the teamwork aspects that really make multiplayer longevity increase dramatically. So if you're interested in exploring new ways to play RTS multiplayer, but you still like to pull up tanks, I think CNC4 multiplayer is for you. It has team play, players, one-on-one -on -one player, even in a team play context. And then we got co-op, we have full co-op, which is just 
a whole new way to play campaign. It's like a real progression of what we've done in the past. We knew that multiplayer was going to be the thing that lasted a long time after launch, so we've put a lot of effort into trying to make that the best experience ever, trying to make it uh, less intimidating for players to get online and to have a great time playing CNC. And we hope you all check it out when the game is on shelves on March 16th.